Hi, everybody. It's Agnes. And I just want to welcome today Martina. She's from New Jersey in the USA. And she has come to talk manifesting today. Welcome, Martina. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. And um, I'm really looking forward to hearing your success stories and your law of attraction, good stuff. And uh, yeah, you go ahead, go ahead. I'm all ears. So um, I started this whole thing where I contacted you in October because me and my SP, I've known him for like 22 years since high school. So it wasn't until like recently, like towards the end of 2016, when he told me like he was in love with me and stuff. But at that time, I was kind of getting over somebody else that I didn't even see or have a relationship with. I don't know. It, I just had like a lot of emotion that wasn't dealt with because I was just coming off of, you know, leaving a job that didn't treat me right, but I had a, a great new job. And then my two grandparents passed in 2013 and 14 and then like family issues. And then the job I had before that. It was just, I just had like a whole lot of emotion and he's always been there for me. But then when he told me how he cared about me, I was like, and loved me. Like I was kind of mad. I was like, you waited all this time and had all these girlfriends to tell me, but I just feel like if he would have told me earlier, I wouldn't have received it that well, but still I wasn't like where I wanted to be emotionally, spiritually, even though. I go to church and stuff. I still wasn't like, you know, I didn't take myself and like shake myself and say, Hey, you know, you should get tired of your false beliefs, your false, everything that you believe in yourself. And, you know, like, I don't know, I'm jumping around, but yeah. So me and him kind of dated. And then I started feeling like he was pushing back because he had just got off of a relationship with some girl that I hate. I hate to say the word hate, but but anyway, we're not going to talk about that. But yeah. then I started saying that, oh, you know, he he was pushing back from me. He shouldn't have gone with other people. Like, he should have time by himself. And then I saw that he was doing that. And it's because I was saying it. So then um, during last year, I think I saw some of your videos. But then at the time, I wasn't really, I didn't know what to do. So I was just like, you know giving us some space and then like some of your videos popped up. I think the first one I saw was when you mentioned about, um, what is that guy, Deepak Chopra? He was having, um, I think in July, he had like a mass meditation thing or something like that. You announced it. And then it was something else where I saw like different videos, but then I was like, you know, whatever. So then me and him kind of like talked again and was, you know, taking it one day at a time. Like I wrote him a, a love letter and stuff like that. And I told him we'll take it one. I can't, we can't take it that slow because we're not that young. So I told him, you know, we'll take it one day at a time. And then I felt like I kept having to, you know, call him and ask him to do things with me. And like, you know, I was over contacting and just being like this, you know, so then the last date we went out on was uh, to Turtleback Zoo over here in New Jersey. And it was a good day. But then, like, I was just feeling something, like a space. And I'm thinking, is this coming from me or him? So, like, that was in September. And then, like, towards the end of September, like, he said, oh, he needed, um, he's not feeling himself. And he wanted to stay by himself. So I was like, you know what, I'll leave you alone. Like, I sent him, like, a four-page text, like, you know, telling him off. And then that was it. So then I had told myself, you know, something's going on here. Every time I say that he's doing something, he's doing it. So then that's when I started watching your videos. And about the first thing I typed in was like, oh, you know, um, what is it? The specific person meditations and stuff like that. And then you mentioned something about self-love. And I'm like, oh, I have self-love but it's all in your head. It's not, it wasn't here in my heart. So I said, you know, let me give Agnes a call. And um, so that's when I had wrote you the email, I think in October, and I was telling you everything. And you told me that, you know, um, I didn't have like that much self-love. Like I have to start with self-love. So 
start with like knowing that I'm loved, knowing that I matter. And I haven't felt like that in all my life because of, um, because of, um, you know, what I was told when I was a child, the things I went through, all that bad stuff people told me. And then um, around December was when I met with Shelly to get rid of those old beliefs that came from my past. So now I believe that I'm loved. I believe that I matter. And like, if somebody doesn't call me or text me, it doesn't mean anything. You know, it doesn't mean that I'm less of a person. I'll just say, Martina, for those who don't know who Shelly is, Mm -hmm. Shelly Lefko, who does the How to Change and Eliminate Beliefs, and I'll put the link down below to her work. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, because I think I emailed you three times, I think October, November, whenever that was. So I remember I emailed you in November and I asked you, well, his birthday is in November. We haven't spoken in like a month and a half. Should I give him, you know, a birthday gift? I was just buying it in good faith because I knew that, you know, he didn't have a reason for, for me not to be in his life, for him to be mad at me or anything like that. He doesn't have a reason not to want to not talk to me. So I bought him a birthday gift and I called him late in the day. And during the whole day when I was at work, I had said, you know, he's not going to answer. He's not going to answer. I'm not going to get him on the phone. So of course that happened. <laughs> so, so at the time, I didn't want to be distracted by any phone calls or text messages or anything. And I kind of dropped away from my family for two months from just everything. I was just going to work and coming home because I needed to regroup. I needed to, you know, just block out all the negative things. Like I was getting, you know, negative things from like my mom saying stuff about him. And then, you know, just negative things from everywhere. Not like other people talk, because nobody else was talking bad about him. Like, I haven't been on social media since September. I have not posted on Instagram or Facebook, you know, because I never was really on there that much anyway. So I blocked all that out. Yeah. And, like, my family was trying to, like, you know, see what, where I was and stuff. And I couldn't really tell them that I had to regroup. I just said, you know, I've been working 12 hours, which is true. I was working 12 hour days and I was tired, but I didn't tell them what I was going through. So his birthday is in November and I had called him on his phone and then he didn't pick up. So then like my phone was on silent for like months. And then um, I just happened to um, think I emailed you again in, in, I think December or something and asked you, Oh, should I tell him happy new year? And I love you. So I think we met the first time around that time. I'm not sure. And then, um, I had saw a text. I saw that he had called me in December 29th and I was scared to listen to the message. So I remember you telling me, Oh, you need to listen to the message. I didn't listen to it until the end of January. But, um, and then I had saw that he left me another message. He had called me actually the day after his birthday. So I'm getting all these messages months later. It's because I just didn't want to be distracted by, you know, oh my God, is he going to call me? Like, I didn't want that whole distraction because that's the neediness. You know, that's where it's like, oh my God, I need him to call me so I can feel important, so I can feel that he loves me and all that other stuff. So um, once I got in touch with him, um, we met up February 3rd at dinner and stuff, and we talked, and I just explained to him, you know, um, what I was going through. Like, I wasn't completely healed from all that crap I went through years prior. So, um, like, I remember last year he was saying something that, oh, it looks like I have um, unresolved issues, unresolved feelings stuff like that so I'm like what is he talking about and it was true I didn't know that was coming out I knew I had certain things going on within me but I didn't know okay it's really coming out because I'm always aware of myself I'm always aware of like energy and stuff like that and um I didn't know it was that bad and then also because I hated his ex um you know I disliked his ex I kept mentioning her, mentioning stuff. It was because I was angry he went with her. I was just angry, you know, even though that crap only lasted a year. But, you know, but I 
didn't know how that made him feel. And I was telling him, you should tell me how, you know, you're feeling and stuff like that. Cause I can't like, I just felt like I was giving my all, my all, my all. And I didn't know that was like being too pushy, too needy. And it was just coming from a place of me as I was, when I was younger, people telling me, oh, we can't hear you. Oh, um, nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Oh, it don't matter. Like all of that culminates. And I knew this years ago about myself that I needed to like do something about it. I never knew how to. Yeah. Like I went to church and stuff. Like I could never like um, meditate because my mind like thinks about stuff. And then whenever like you're hurt and there's the pain, you don't want to face it. Like you don't want to come to the mirror and face it because it's scary. You don't want to deal with it. Yeah. You know, it brings back like just the angst and the agony mm. and stuff. So I was just like, I don't, I always say, oh, I'm fine. I don't need this. I don't need that. But I did need it because it culminates over the years and it can come out. And when it comes out, it's going to come out at the wrong time, you know, so and prevent you from having a relationship you want, being the person you want. Because I've always said to myself that I, I've always seen myself as, you know, um, the high, a higher version of myself. Like, I'm not saying, oh, like superior, but you know, stronger more powerful or whatever but i never ex exuded that so i'm like why am i thinking less of myself have an inferiority complex and there's people out here who are horrible to other people and they think oh people should come to them because you know and i'm yelling at myself and one day i yelled at myself in the mirror saying you know why the hell do you think so less of yourself like why do you think you can't have the person you want why do you think you're not loved like what the hell is wrong with you and I'm yelling at myself and then my cat he just comes in there and he's just staring at me I'm like oh so I didn't know I was being that loud so and I was like you have to get to a point where you're sick of yourself I got sick of myself being like just having those negative beliefs just like you know just thinking like, oh, you know, I'm here and my SP is up here. And it's like, I just want people to know that if you love someone, see, I know my love for my SP, it grew over the years because I was never attracted to him in <coughs> high school or anything. Um, I always got yelled at about him by my mom because my mom was like, you know, he likes you and you like these. I was like, I always felt like, oh, you know, they were putting my feelings for him you know, towards them, like they were influencing me. That's one thing I don't like. I don't like my feelings or anything to be influenced. Yeah. So that's why, you know, I, you know, he had girlfriends. I liked whoever, but I always knew that he was the right one for me. But because I was still finding myself out and didn't know who I was, I, you know, just pushed him away kind of. But it's funny how, um, like, once we graduated high school, we kept in contact. And then we lost contact for five years and we got back together. Like every time we're apart, we come back. So, you know, and I always thought that he just saw me as a friend. Cause one time he called me like, Oh, you're like a sister to me. And I'm like, I got mad. And normally some people won't get mad, but I didn't know why I was getting mad. Maybe my phones for him were starting. I don't know. It's, it's just, when I think of it, it's just a big, and I know that the way I was feeling and the stuff I was doing was coming from a place of neediness, desperation, and angst. Like, oh my God, you know, because, you know, you grow up on believing certain things and you get it from your parents, you get it from like your family members, people around you. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it just kills your spirit. Because, yeah. you know, I also go to church too. And, you know, I, I have my faith. Cause I have like a lot of Bible scriptures up here that talk about don't look at what you see because what you see changes like how you were saying how um, you know everything is not an illusion but like photocopy like whatever you feel because I was never told that oh you know you have to feel good from the inside to attract you know good stuff on the outside I thought everything had to be good on the outside in order to be happy yes so I didn't know happiness came from within. I wasn't told about this stuff when I was younger. So now, like, I'm so grateful that I found you. And, like, the whole, now I can meditate. Even though my mind still trails off a little, I still meditate as long as I, you know, listen to your voice and stuff. But, like, I enjoy all your meditations. Like, 
I want to tell everybody, like, the first ones I did was the self-love. The self-love, like, the first best. I did, like, once I, you know, included um, the specific person, it was just, like, the one meditation because I had to focus on myself. I didn't really do the specific person one until, like, a week after. Like, it was just, you know, self-love, self-love, self-love. So once I got that, then... I incorporated the specific person and radiating out love to him. So my staple every day since I started doing meditations is self-love first. And then like whatever ones my spirit leads me to, like when I get up in the morning for work, I only do like the, um, the ones that are long, like the 20 minute ones. And then I um, do the uh, unconditional love because I don't have that much time. Yeah. So when I come home, I do like five, you know, so yeah, so, like, I have to build up on, like, you know, um, just self-love, like, I'm there, and also I wanted to say that I recorded myself with affirmations. Yep. On some of them, I'm yelling at myself, <laughs> because um, I have an app, I have an Android, so I have an app that says My Affirmations, and basically, it has, like, a list that you can, you know, you could record your own or just read it, so I recorded, like, 49 for self-esteem um and then like you know you have your um assumptions meditation i have some of that with in a different folder called assumptions like i say oh isn't it wonderful how me and my sp are together like i say his name and he's blessed to be with me i'm blessed to be with him like he loves me and everything like i say it with at with conviction like i know this Yes. So um, I think what really helps is if you hear yourself say your affirmations, like I am loved, I yeah. matter, um, I'm first best, like the ones that you say, I said to myself. So those were like the staples. And then I had like, you know, remember the Walkmans with the recorders? Yeah. I have a pink one. And before I use my app, I said, I am loved, I am loved 300 times and like the other ones. So I have like a tape full of saying that. And then when I got my app, like I did like the different ones, but those were the staples that I started out with first. Wow. So that helps out a lot when you hear yourself say, in the beginning, it's like, you don't feel it. You hear it, you know it in your head, but it starts to well up in your heart. Yes. You believe it in your heart and your spirit. So, you know, I just, it's just been like different for me. Like now, I have a, a better outlook on life. Like once I um, like sit down, you have to sit down with yourself and say, you don't want to live like this. You don't want to still have those beliefs. So like when I sat down with Shelly in December and also I think in January, um, she really helped me out with the left code method um, where you say, oh, what does I don't, I'm not good enough look like. It doesn't look like anything. Yeah. You know, what does, um, you're, you're like, how does it feel now to say I'm able to attract the person that I want? I'm able to have the person that I want. So, you know, it feels good. Cause then it's like, if you say, I can't have that. And it's like, it, if you question yourself, like, why am I thinking I can't have that? Like I didn't do, if somebody who's a real a-hole, like, this is what I don't get sometimes. I know I'm jumping around. I'm sorry, but no, it's fine. It's um, fine. I just got a lot to say. It's like, <laughs> I've also asked myself the question, if this person who is the a-hole who cheated on their boyfriend, did all these kinds of stuff to other people, and this person thinks that they're marriage material, why the hell do you think that you're not marriage material? Like, what's your issue? Yeah. You know, and it comes from just being rejected in the past. Yeah. have a negative thing said about me you have to look at yourself like you don't treat anybody wrong you know you don't deliberately go out there and try to make somebody have a bad day or do anything bad to anyone you know you're a great person you're a child of God and then I told myself how dare you think any less of yourself when you're a child of God and God created you yeah so you just have to sit down and just face yourself and what also helps is um I think two years ago, because I kept going back to, oh, you know, I didn't notice when I was a child. No, I believed this and that when I was a child. I wrote myself a letter 
And if anyone is, you know, experiencing anything from their past, like 2015 was, it, I have to write a letter to my 2015 self because just to eradicate any other yeah. feelings I might have. But I wrote a letter to my young self because when I was younger, people would say a lot of negative things about me. So I just basically, I think it's like two pages long. Um, I wrote a letter saying how, you know, I'm a great person, you know, I'm strong and all this other stuff, you know, just, and I was crying when I was writing. I haven't read the paper in like three years. Yeah. So like if anyone is really struggling with like their self-esteem, their self-love, get in that mirror. Cause I have that book. I forgot the name, his name. It's, um, love yourself. Like your, like your, yeah, like your life depends on it. And I went to the mirror and I stood there for like five minutes telling myself, you know, I love you. I love you. I love you. I even have like a list that I tell myself, like, um, I love you. You are absolutely eternally wonderful and worthy of great things. Mm. Like I have everything around here. So then like, um, just to backtrack a little when my SP, like last year when we were like dating, he has said, I don't understand, like, you have all these scriptures on the wall and your faith isn't there. So I was like, because I remember my co-pastor from church yelling at me because I allowed, like, because I'm such a caring person and, and I don't like when I see people cry or upset, no matter who they are. I let that, you know, get to me and I don't, um, you know, try to think on, well, I used to do that. I don't think on the bright side, you know, like I don't, I don't know. I let it get to me and I start seeing the darkness of it. So she said, you're going to, um, you're going to drive somebody crazy if you think that way. So I'm like, you know, I have to do something. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I had to, um, just look at myself and say, if I've been going to church all this long, why don't I have faith? Mm. So I was just like, oh, my God, he's right. So then I had to, you know, just sit down with myself and say, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to, like, I had to, like, shake myself. Like, why the hell are you believing this? Like, let go of it. Yeah. You know, there's no purpose to keep it. Just let go. Yeah. So I'm just like. It's been a long road. Like, I think once you sit yourself down, because I know people are worried about the timing. Yes. I said timing doesn't exist. I yes. told myself, I told God, if I got to wait to the ends of the earth forever, I'm willing to stand. So, and then I didn't even know, like, during the time I had my phone on silent and not being around people, he was contacting me. So, yes. um, he also told me when we were at my dinner, well, when we went to dinner in February, um, that my sister contacted him because she didn't hear from him, hear from me. So, but she lives upstairs because we live in a building and we got like different schedules. So she contacted him and he was like, oh yeah, your sister contacted me. And that's the call that he called me on the 29th of December. So I'm like, oh. So I was like, I just needed some time to myself. And I said, you know, I didn't want to project. I started using words like how you were talking about projection and stuff like that. And I was trying not to reveal anything to him. Yeah. So, cause I said I had to work on myself and it's like, you know, I didn't know I was coming out as being too needy and cause I just wanted to spend some time with him. And then I was thinking, oh, if we're supposed to be together and, bo and build up and build a relationship, um, how are we supposed to, why are we apart and this and that? But when you have like that neediness, it's resistance. So you have to do something about it. So that's what I did. And I think I want everybody else to understand too, like once you attract the specific person, you do not stop your meditations. You do not stop the self-love, yeah. radiating, and don't have the focus so much on, on the person. Um, also, like, I want to attract money. Um, I think one time during the, um, one of your Q&As, I said I attracted, uh, I think it was $1,200, because I didn't know that my, when I used to work for the temp company, they sent me, I guess, Christmas money. So now I don't work for them anymore. I'm permanent at my job, so... 
I didn't know that was coming. So I said, oh, money comes from other than my wage. Money comes from known and unknown channels. Yeah. And, um. Beautiful. Yeah. Sorry if I'm talking too much. Like no. My throat is getting dry. Yeah. But, um. Also, I just saw a video of yours. Um, it's one of the old videos that you put on your channel. Um, it's the same from this lady. Um, I think I wrote it down. It says, um, the unexpected happened. My seemingly impossible good came to pass. Yeah. I forgot the lady's name. Um, it's Florence Scovel Shin. Oh, she said that, and I have her book. Yeah. I don't know what, I think I got two of her books. So... I say that every day. Nice. Yeah. So, and also with the SP, once you get the person back, you're actually tested because I went for a week without hearing from him. So me last year would have been texting him and calling him, yeah. but I said, you know what? He's busy. I'm busy. You know, um, I'm not going to over contact. I'll wait till he contact me and he contacted me. And once again, I wasn't checking my text messages or anything. And I saw that he contacted me the 13th of this month and yesterday and then today and stuff like that. So I'm just saying it's not a big deal that the person didn't contact you back. I just feel like um, it's just the way, like everybody has a life, you know. And another thing, like I watched Dan a lot and he had said something about you know, yeah, you could manifest a phone call, a text message, or a date, or like a hi from them. But what do you? What else do you want from that? You know, be more specific. Like, oh, you want a text message from them? Okay, you feel good for that second. But what's the bigger picture? You know, my bigger picture isn't just oh, I want a text message or spend time with him. We're getting married, come hella high water. You know, I don't care how crazy that sounds, but that's my bigger picture: a life with him. You know, we went this far, 22 years. Wow. So, you know, and then, because he was saying when we first got together, he's like, oh, I should have known Then we could have been married and stuff. And I said, well, I wouldn't have, I'm different now than I was then. So, and also, I think I want to say more stuff. How long have we been talking? 20 minutes? <laughs> I got a lot. 30, about 30 minutes. No, you got, still got half an hour. Keep going. Oh. Oh, because I'm just like, I'm just jumping everywhere. And I just, I just want everyone to know that um, after this interview, you're going to leave my email, right? If you want, like my contact. Yeah, really, we can put it in the description or you can answer comments in the thread, however you want to do it. Okay, we can do it any kind of way. It don't matter me. I just, I've always wanted to help people, but I was always scared because yeah. Of what I was told when I was younger, oh, nobody, nobody's going to listen to you. You yeah. know, what can you help? You know, all that stuff. When you tell somebody that young and then they grow well, up thinking. Martina, where did you hear that? Was that, that at school? Um, or it, um it could have been a few. It could have been school and it could have been like some family members. Okay. You know, or maybe people you just run into, like, oh, if you're with a cousin or something and yeah, like somebody that's an idiot just approaches you and just says stupid stuff. Yeah. So, cause I remember one time, one of my sister's friends, this is like a few years ago, I had came home from visiting my uncle and I didn't know who the guy was. Like I came home and um, he was like, oh, I didn't know. Um, Melanie didn't tell me you had a sister. They didn't tell me that they had an older sister. You're like Meg from um, Family Guy. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> so I said, you know, whatever. But, you know, yeah, I don't know who that was. But, yeah, it's like just certain things. And I remember my mom telling me, you know, like she told me that I get this from my father where I take people personally. Like, I take it as an insult, and I need to stop doing that. Like, I try to, because with me, because I was spoken to harshly or whatever when I was younger or when, you know, because I'm a quiet person. I'm very nice. I'm very loving. I have a heart. Like, I'm very sensitive to people's energies and stuff yeah. like that. I'm an animal lover. You know, I cry if I see a tiger eating a deer. Yeah. You know, I'm that type of person. So, like, when somebody tells me something like that, 
like it really like stings me it makes me think yeah oh am i like that like i know all i know that person's just being an a-hole or it's just me projecting out but you have to realize that your happiness and who you believe you are come from yourself yeah it comes from here that's why before you even think about talking to your sp or you know thinking about them you have to work on yourself if you're needy and you're like in agony because i know sometimes on the q a i see people like their voice is like in agony because their sp is gone i understand the agony i understand the despair you know you want to contact them back before they go with somebody else i understand all of that yeah i understand all of that but you have to realize that if you keep thinking, oh, my God, they're going to go for somebody else, that's what's going to happen. You're putting all that energy out on them. And what matters is you have to, you have to be happy with yourself. You have to love yourself first. Because yeah. if you don't love yourself, the person is going to think, oh, well, because they feel that vibe. They feel that vibe of you. Here he is. They feel that vibe of you not loving. You know how it's off? It's something off about you yeah so I notice how some people if they like somebody they put that person over them and they have an inferiority complex that's not what you should do at all no because that's basically telling the person hey I'm inferior to you you're better than me and then that person's gonna if they're a good person they're gonna say hey you know don't feel that way about yourself if they're a hole they're gonna do a hole stuff to you yeah so and that's a guarantee so like i know like how people feel but the steps that i did was do self-love first like in the beginning when people mentioned self-love i was like oh yeah i love myself i love myself but that was here it wasn't here in my heart yes so i didn't feel i didn't like i always thought that oh like if somebody was rude to me and then I saw they wasn't rude to the other person. It was like, okay, what the hell is wrong with me? Yes. It's that is what's wrong with them. Yeah. Or am I thinking, you know, that I project that out? Because I've, and I've also noticed since I've been doing all this stuff, my thoughts are being more, are more powerful. Like I could think of something and then it happens. Like maybe a song comes on. Yeah. Or, you know, or maybe, um, cause I was thinking last weekend I had went out with my parents and I was like, Oh, it'd be great if my younger sister would come. Cause my two sisters are only three, three years apart and they're always hanging out. And my younger sister tagged along with us and I was like, Oh, it's great. And then last Sunday I went to the mall and she came with me. So we never, I'm eight years. I used to babysit her. I'm eight years older than her. So you know so it's like it was great hanging out with her and stuff it's like I can think of different things and and they come to pass and I'm like I got to be careful of that yeah and then also I want to say I've, besides the SP um I've been doing things at work too um I use the rub out method yeah and it works like I only use it well I use it for um to get my feelings away like to to heal myself the first um rub out method i did was for me to stop thinking about my sp's exes yeah so i did i think i think i just did like a two page um not two page but a two sided um cartoon it was me and then i drew her but she was like this small and i drew her looking like a troll so Whatever made me feel better, whatever made me feel better, I made myself bigger and more like, you know, whatever. And I said, um, get the hell away from him. He doesn't like you and you will no longer affect me. You're nothing. I got 22. I kept going off. I said, go away. And then I put the balloon and she said, okay. So I erased her. (laughs) And then I drew me and him and I drew him saying, oh, you know, hi tina i love you so much i'm glad she's gone i said i'm glad she's gone too and you know i kept having to do it every time i was thinking about i wish i would have known about this last year you know yeah so i just kept doing it and doing it until you know sometimes she might pop up in my head or any of his exes might pop up in my head but then i'm thinking why am i thinking about them is this some some like insecurities about me 
because I was feeling second best. Now, here we go with the first best yeah. and second best. I was feeling second best. I didn't know I was feeling that way. Yeah. So I saw your video about that. So I'm like, that's why I was mentioning that. That's why I was feeling that way. Yes. So once you know, like, where you're stuck or what you're doing, you can fix it. Like, don't worry about the timing. Like, oh, you know, it's been four months. It's been two years. Like, time doesn't exist. You know, so that's what made me focus and just say to myself, you know, it's going to happen because sometimes I know it's going to happen because he's a, a really beautiful person. And I think sometimes people, um, everyone in the audience, make sure that your SP, the person that you like or love or whatever, is a great person. You know, um, when you're doing your, that's why you have to do self-love first because you, when you do your self-love, you're cleansing your energy, you're cleansing your spirit. And then like, once you cleanse that and you might realize that, okay, this person wasn't so nice to me. Like, why do I like him? I've been there in high school. I liked this idiot for like five years. And that's because of my look. I, I had low self-esteem, you know, and now I think to, about it now. I'm like, why the hell did I like him? Yeah. You know, it's like low self-esteem, but I know like a lot of people, when they want to look at, oh, SP, um, you know, SP, I can't even talk right now. SP, you know, um, what's the word? <laughs> like, success. Oh, they don't, okay. yeah. <laughs> SP, success, like, they don't want to hear, like, oh, you know, once you do the self-love, you won't want them. No. No. And, and I know a lot of people in the LOA community and in the world, whatever, if they believe in LOA, they don't believe that you can attract back another, you can attract them back, but the answer always isn't from, cause I stopped telling people when I had issues with someone, cause the thing that they would say, oh, well maybe God doesn't want you with them yeah. and maybe God wants you with somebody. No, no, that's not it. And I remember at church, this girl was upset about some guy that she was with. And I said, you know, the answer isn't, oh, maybe God doesn't want you with them. It's other stuff, but it doesn't, you yeah. know, this before I was doing, you know, before I was watching your videos or whatever. So it didn't mean that. So I stopped. The one thing you guys have to do, please stop telling people yeah. your business concerning your SP, money, school, whatever. Please keep it to yourself. Yes. Between you and God, if you believe in God or get yeah. a life coach, ask Agnes yeah. about, you know, have somebody that agrees with you, That's you know. True. I agree, Martina, because I get a lot of emails where people have told somebody and the person turns on them and says, what do you want that for? Or, you know, he was this to you or she wasn't very whatever. And, mm -hmm. and then, you, then you have to try and dismantle what the person said because you're upset about it. Keep, yeah. Keep it close to you. Yeah, and it really knocks you off of your... Like yeah. you could be on... I always think of me being on a train track and then you tell somebody something and you knock off. And another thing I want to say that I want to get into also, please get off of Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Google+, Plus, whatever. Yeah. Um, don't stalk your SP. Don't think, oh my God, um, I need to see. No, you don't need to see what he's doing. No, you don't need to see what she's doing. Nope. Don't care. I don't care if, and then also what also hurt was that um, I remember I had told you, um, like my family, he, since I've known him 22 years, my family knows him and he's friends with my family on Facebook. So I remember the last outing I went with them on my father's birthday. Um, I was so nervous at the table. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I hope nobody mentions him. My mom mentions him. It was so-and-so's birthday, Monday, blah, 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 blah. And then my sister's like, oh, somebody got him this. I'm like, I was just like, you know, that's when I decided, I said, okay, Tina, you got to get serious. You got to cut these, you got to cut out from everybody. Yeah. Not cut them off, but just pull back. And even though I didn't spend Thanksgiving or Christmas with my family, I had to do that for myself. I gave them their Christmas presents after when I, I see it as like, when you feel like you're drowning, you're sinking, yeah. you're in quicksand, you got to say, okay, I have to do something because 
my I, I just felt so emotionally and energetically drained. I'm like, I have to do something for myself. I'm like, I say my age, I don't care. People don't believe my age. I'm 36 years old. I can't keep believing stuff from my past. I can't keep saying, oh, well, you know, this and this, and then not do nothing about like, in the past, I didn't know what to do about it. Of course, I was going to church and stuff, but I wasn't meditating and like saying, okay, God loves you, isn't that? But what really helped me was like just sitting down, yelling at myself and listening to like affirmations and just, you just have to be, you just have to be ready for, ready to face the pain, ready to face the, um, the agony and despair. You just have to, even though it's scary, you don't want to face it. Yeah. You have to, if you want to, I mean, life's too short. I'm already 36. I'm like, you know, people don't believe me when I tell you my age, but you know, it's like, I, I just, you have to just sit down. I wish I would have sat down with myself a long time ago, but because I was allowing the outside influences to get to me, I was just like, whatever I was passing. You have to be aggressive about this and don't see it as though, okay, I'm going to do this to get my SP back. No, that's not going to work. I did this for me. I said, I got sick of myself. I got sick of feeling this way, sick of my false beliefs, sick of idiot people who said stuff to me, who's not even thinking about me. They're probably passed on to the other side, you know, thinking bad things about me yeah. or saying, you know, all that crap. You got to get rid of all that crap. It'll take time, but you have to like, just sit with yourself. Just, if you have to, just go to work or school, come home, sit with yourself, talk to your cat. I do every day to my cat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he doesn't listen. But, you know, but just you just have to sit there. Like, talk to God because God hears you. You just have to. I'm just urging people, just please do your self-love first. Yeah. Uh, say your affirmation. And I think sometimes when people do meditations, um, like I see on Q and A's and, and, uh, and every other place, like they try to dissect, like say you have the um, sending out, radiating out love and you say to send out a golden light. Some people say, oh, well, I like the color pink. If I send out a pink light, yeah. is that gonna attract them? Who cares about the light? Who can't like stop taking, <laughs> I'm serious. I just like, I just want these people to know, like, stop taking these meditations and these advices and everything and like breaking it apart. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, unless I come on here and say, okay, I attracted my SP by every day standing on my head, yeah. saying my affirmations. Don't see it as, you know, oh, um, if I do this, it'll get him here. Yeah. You know? And then I also saw like, when I was looking for like, you know, trying to get myself and like, you know, get him back in my life. I had seen some certain things on YouTube saying, oh, spells to get your yeah. lover back. And that's manipulation. Do not do manipulation. Yeah. Do not do that. I'm not saying, you know, witchcraft or whatever. I don't care. Yeah. But do not do manipulation because manipulations is to me. You won't, you don't love the person if you got to manipulate them. Exactly. So like, I know my love for my SP has grown over the years. It's true love. Yeah, I might have liked other guys and stuff, but he's always been there for me. He was there for me in 2010 when I had my um, fibroid surgery. Yeah. You know, he helped walk me around the hospital and I was in pain. He, he seen me down. He seen me up. He was there for me. My grandparents died and we kind of go through the same things. His grandmother died and Fan was acting stupid, yeah. you know? So, and it's like, I'm, and then like the guy that I liked before him, even though I knew him a long time, we didn't have a bond, but me and my SP, he's also my best friend. So I'm just telling people, y'all have to make sure that your SP that you like is somebody who compliments you. Hell with them. If you compliment them, but they compliment you. They want your best interests at heart. Yeah. They love you for you. And, you know, you're not just going with them to be like, oh, my God, you know, um, I got to get with this person before they go with that person. Now you're going to make them go to that person. Yeah. And then another thing I did was um, if you're not speaking to your SP, Dan also mentioned, or if you're having problems with anyone, write energy letters. 
So it could be any format. I had said to him, I wrote energy letters to him, to my mom when I was upset about her, yeah. and just to people at my job. Um, well, one person at my job, and I also did the rub out method for her, just so that she won't, just like when you had, uh, I think you had a story about the rub out method with the, your coworker, yep. and she ended up getting fired yep. or something. But I don't want this person to get fired, but I just don't want her to like, I don't know, I just don't want to take her personally. She doesn't bother me that much no more, because we're always laughing and talking, whatever, but whatever. But yeah, you can write energy letters. It doesn't matter the format. Because I know some people are like, oh, so how do you start it off? It doesn't matter if you say, hey, dear, so-and-so's higher self. That's how I start off. If you start off any other way, that's fine. It doesn't mean that, oh, if you start off this way, it's wrong. That means they won't come back or feel your energy. Make sure when you write the energy letters, you're being influenced. I forgot what Dan called that. Uh, when you're motivated to do something. An impulse. Um, not impulse, but it's like, I forgot. I keep inspired, saying it. Inspired action? Yes, inspired action. So make sure you have the inspired action to do yeah. that. Because you don't want to write something and then, um, you know, I know Dan talks of like thought transmission and stuff. They yeah. can feel that and sense it. So mm -hmm. you just write it down, have like inspired action. And then what I do, what I found on YouTube this lady broke up with her boyfriend and she wanted her stuff. So she wrote him an energy letter and she didn't put any address or anything. She put it in a mailbox and two weeks later she got her stuff. It was at her door. So I did that with him. You know, I wrote him an energy letter and I put it in the mailbox. I wrote him too, you know, just so our energies could be connected so that also, you know, so that instead of us just being physically drawn to each other, we have that physical connection. It's also spiritual, it's energetic, it's mental. Like people forget that you just don't want to have a physical connection with somebody. You want to have a spiritual, mental, emotional, like all of that instead of just like, oh, physical, they're here. I, they have to be here for me to have that connection. You know, it has to be energetically because yeah, um, I collect Barbies. Ever since I was three, I have over 400 facts about me. Wow. Um, yeah, so Mattel came out with a new line with uh, hero, female heroes. They call Sheroes. Yeah. So um, they have like um, Bindi. Um, what's her last name? Bindi, the, um, the crocodile hunter's daughter. They have her. Bindi. They have. Um, one. Yeah, they have. Wow. Her and like some other women, and also they have the woman from uh, that movie uh, about the black um, females who are helping the astronauts. I forgot the name of the movie. Yes, that, I can't think of it either. It such a good movie. Hopefully, someone will remember for it. That was a brilliant movie. Yeah, it was. And they have uh, Taraji P. Henson's character as a doll. So I was like, oh, because me and my mom, we always talk about dolls or whatever. So I was like, oh, I was telling her about it. And I was like, oh, you know. That's the first one I'm going to get. And then a couple of days ago on the 13th, I saw my text from my SP. And he was like, oh, you should get this doll. And it was her. Wow. So I was like, oh, I was like, you know me so well. So I'm like, I was just thinking a few days ago before that, like I should get that doll and she's the first one I want. And then he shows me that. So I'm like, and I told this girl at my job, she's into LOA too. Like we just found out. Um, and I think she, yeah, because I told her about you too. So she's been watching your videos and stuff. So um, she was like, yeah, you two are in tune with each other and stuff like that. So I had texted him back and said, oh, you know me so well. You know, we know each other and stuff like that. I, I feel like we have more than like a physical bond. It's spiritual is growing, you know. So, and I also have my, um, I hope nobody gets confused about what I'm saying because I know I jump around a lot, but don't worry guys. If you email me or leave a message, I'll be more in detail. I'm just excited. Yeah, no, it's good. It's <laughs> but um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, I have a gratitude list. I have a, a book that says um, high vibes or something like that. Vibes, good vibes only or something. Yeah. So, um, I have uh, 
something in this called I'm so grateful and thankful now that blah, 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 blah. Like anything that's happened or anything that I would like to happen, yeah. it's in there. So like I read it every morning when I get up after I do my med after I pray and I do my meditations yeah. and then I read the, the gratitude list and I add on to it, like whatever I feel comes to me because every day stuff doesn't come to me. So um, I have that. And then I have my focus wheel. Yeah. So I had two focus wheels about us communicating and us going out on dates because we're still taking it one day at a time. Like I'm not pushing him. Yeah. So, but um, I would like to have a ring on my finger. Yeah. You know, but I also, um, if anyone that can help anyone, if they're, if they want to get married to their SP and stuff like that, if you're not talking to them at all and say you did your self-love meditations, don't jump to like, okay, I did my self-love meditations. Now I'm going to have a meditation about us getting married. No, start with communication, the dates, you know, just radiate out love. And also when you radiate out love, make sure it's not neediness. That's why I didn't do that in the beginning because it was neediness. Oh my God, I got to radiate out love for him so that he can feel it. That's neediness and desperation and like angst. Oh my God. Like, yeah. Are you going to die if, you know, he's not around or she's not around? Like, that's why self-love, like, centered. You have to be centered and grounded. And if you're tired of doing it, stop doing it. I don't think I got to that point where I was just tired of it. But, um, you know, don't say, okay, I did this for a week. When is it going to happen? Stop thinking when, 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 yeah. you know. And also, and also in my faith, in my Christian faith, we also talk about, you know, um, not looking at what you see, you know, because things are subject to change and also speak like you have it already. That's why I'm like, all of this is just like all these, you know, LOA, Christianity, all this, it's all one, but you know, everybody believes different things, but yeah. yeah, so it's all one. Like if you can train, you have to train yourself to not look at what you see. Yeah. You have to train yourself to not believe that, okay, this is how it is. You know how they have those uh, sayings like, oh, um, the good, something about, um, what is it? Good things don't last forever. Um, it is what it is and all this other crap. I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. And I think another thing is if you see something like contrast, uh, Hicks talks about contrast. Yeah. Like if, to me, because I remember seeing a, um, a sermon on YouTube about, if you see, if you're believing for something and you see the opposite, that means it's coming. So people like to believe in, okay, this is, no, it's not that. If you're a spiritual person and you're awakening, you can see that, okay, everything around here isn't going to be, it's not so, it's not concrete. You know how, how you said uh, conscious creation? Yeah. Like you can, it's like books on the shelf where say you're believing for a car and then you get this you have uh, one book that says you could get the car. The other one that says you're denied the loan. The other one says this and this. You have to focus on what you want. Yeah. And it's like we're trained to, to we're trained as kids that we can't get anything. Oh, you can't have. Well, yeah, when you're young and you want something from the toy store, you say, I want this. And they're like, no. And you're like, oh, but you don't know the reason. You know, maybe the parent or whoever didn't have the money. So we're trained when we get older, you can't have what you want or this or that. But I just want people to know that you have to, to just sit with yourself first, sit with yourself and God first, whoever you believe in, I don't care. Yeah. Just say, first question you should ask, what the hell is my problem? Why am I thinking this? It's always of what you're thinking, feeling, and believing, like what you said. And I read, and I listen to your Neville Nuggets because, um, I'm subscribed to like Neville's channel and I can't really understand what he's saying sometimes because yeah. like the, the way he describes it. So when you say it, I understand it more. So it's like, you have to like, just be like, imagine. I know John is good with like imagining, like I, yeah. I want to get to that level. I know he's like drenched in Neville and stuff. Yeah. So I'm not there yet. So it's like, you just have to sit with yourself and say, okay, what the hell is my problem? What am I thinking, feeling, and believing? Why am I thinking and feeling and believing that? 
And then if they want, they can go and do like the free left co thing. I think it was the three minute thing. Yep. The, yeah. I'm not good enough on the, on their website. Yeah. That's really mm -hmm. good, isn't it? Yeah. But then like I had more issues, so I had to sit and talk with, uh, with yeah. Shelly, but it really helps because she asks you the question, like, what does that look like? Does it mean anything? Like, no. So what I do is if I, because I've been feeling off, my energy was kind of off last week. Maybe it's because at work we had this new stupid database that got on my nerves, but I was kind of off energetically. So I was just feeling like how I was feeling before I started doing my meditations and stuff. I said, you know what, if I'm starting to feel that way, I have to do more self-love and yell at myself in the mirror and ask myself what the hell is going on. Yeah. You know, I just felt myself being, you know, just, I don't know, affected by like en negative energy, like at work or maybe here. Like I had a neighbor that really, I was about to go over there and yell at him because he was talking loud and it was that angry talk. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, it, it's like an intensity. Yeah. And I'm like, is it because I didn't hear from my SP? Maybe that had a part of it. But then I said, you know what? It doesn't mean anything. You know, the bigger picture is us being together, married. I'm not rushing nobody. But it's like you will, like, once you attract whatever you want to attract or having your life and you're centered in your self-love and your knowledge of who you are yeah. and your love for yourself, yeah. you're going to come across challenges. Like, you're going you're gonna to be tested. Like, I was tested last week. So, you know, you just have to just stay, you just have to just stay focused, stay centered and just say, okay, I don't want to project anything. That's why I just felt like, you know, my thoughts, like I was thinking stuff and then stuff came. Yeah. So like you just, and then another thing, just relax and be at peace. Cause I know you were telling me in the beginning, like I wasn't at peace or anything. And now I'm at peace. You just not, you just have to be at peace when there's like this i know it's hard when there's the storm around yeah. you have to be at peace knowing that okay this is just temporary yes. it's not permanent you can make it permanent by focusing on it and then you know dragging your energy down and being uh, like that but it's a challenge i admit it's still a challenge but i don't say okay well i didn't hear from him or whoever i didn't get this then that no it doesn't mean anything yeah it doesn't mean anything and you know i have like my faith i have like meditations and everything that helped me like i still think of jacqueline's um you know her uh whatever her i can't talk her success story i'm sorry um yeah her success story and you know me and hers kind of relate so like i remember her saying oh she sent her SP a text and he left her on red for days and, and she was just saying to herself, okay, it's like that. Then, okay. It's not like F you, what are you doing? Yeah. And all this other stuff. So it's, it takes a lot of, I would say self-control and just being at peace. Like I understand how it's like to be in agony and just like, you know, Oh my God, what's going to happen? What's not going to happen? You can't think of what's not going to happen. Or, and then, like I said before, stay off of Facebook, all social media. If you're serious about this, not just, oh, because I'm talking to, even if I didn't attract my SP back, I'm just telling you guys about my self-love and everything that I've learned. Because yeah. um, I knew he was coming back anyway. Why the hell wouldn't he? You know, you got to have that attitude about yourself. Yeah. You know, don't be like, oh, my God, you know. I mean, it's good to be humble, but you can also damage yourself, you know. Yeah. You've got to be strong, like you said before, in your conviction. Yeah, like, you know you're loved, you know you're worthy. That's another thing, yeah. you know. And I think sometimes some people are attracted to the wrong people, and, you know, and they want to get that person back. It's happened to me. And you just have to sit back and, and put everything in perspective and say, why do I want this person? You know, is there something about me that's missing? Is there something about them that I want? You know, like, I don't know. I feel like I've jumped everywhere. <laughs> I gotta, I, hopefully I went over the stuff that I did. That I, I did my steps right. 
no yeah. no it's good you know i mean that's the thing it's like when you're talking you jump from one to the other because your yeah. head follows and remembers other things it's nice when it doesn't follow a very steady boring format you know mm -hmm. yeah no yeah. i think um i want to ask you something because you said when you first started doing affirmations you you didn't feel anything mm -hmm. so what do you think changed getting it from your head to your heart as you said how did you what happened there um once i got quiet and made the choice to say okay i might not feel loved or whatever but i gotta make the choice to to have this work i gotta make the choice to feel love and yeah. don't force yourself that's the one thing i did i didn't force myself yeah and then i kept having it repeat 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 and then it's good to look at yourself. Yeah. So every morning when I'm getting ready for work, like I have my affirmations playing. Like it could be from just me, my self-esteem, or for my um, SP or for whatever. Yeah. You know, it's good to look at yourself. Yeah. And it's good to say, because you have to make that choice. You know, you're not, it's not going to just come to you. Don't be passive about this. You have to be aggressive. And that was my problem in the past. I wasn't aggressive. I was like, oh, whatever, and this and that. It'll just come. It does not come to you. You leave things in haphazard, and when the right person or the right situation comes, you're not ready for it. Yeah. It won't work out. Yeah. So it's like you just have to make that choice and say, okay, I'm going to not going to force myself to believe it, but I'm going to stay in the process. It's the process. It's going to be a process. Yes. So we leave this world, yeah. you know. We all can't be 100% unless we, you know, we just have to realize that we're all a work in progress and we have to go. Because I remember at church last year, he kept talking about the topic the whole year was like going through the process. I'm like, the hell? But, you know, now I see it, you know. Yes. So it's like you just have to, I know it's scary, you know, anyone who, is feeling low and feeling like, oh my God, stuff can't change. Okay, if you believe it's not going to change, it's not going to. Yeah. Because your words can come back. And I never knew when I was younger that, you know, your words can come back. Like, you know how to say sticks and stones break your bones and yeah. other stuff. Words do hurt and words are powerful because it's like energy behind that. And I never knew that. They teach me that in church too, but I was like, you know, yeah. before I went there. But now I see like the clarity of everything. It's like, it's up to me. I have to make that choice. If I want to not hell with your SP right now or whatever, if yeah. I want to live a great, fantastic life, attract everything that I want, not so that it can make me feel better. I have to make the choice to say, okay, I have to get rid of some nasty beliefs, some nasty feelings. I have to yeah it's writing letters to you every day you could write a letter to yourself when you was five years old if something happened to you or if you had a bad year like 2015 or whenever you yeah. know just write it out how many times or like do what i did like write energy letters and just put it in the mailbox i know the mail people are probably like, what the hell is this i don't care if they read it because i don't have any names on it my yeah. address isn't on it you know i just said two so-and-so's hat um two um T's higher self, you know, like whatever their first initial their name is. Yeah. You know, there's nothing to trace it back to me. So yeah. Like you can do that, burn the letter. I don't burn it since I live in an apartment, but I just mail it just to let it go. Yeah. You just have to be at peace. And that's why I said please stay off of social media because you could be at peace and be like me and say you have not spoken to your SP in months and then you turn on Facebook and you see him with somebody, you don't know who it is. Yeah. Or you see he went here and then, and it's like, you're off your track. You're beyond, like, you're 100 miles away. Yeah. So it's like, I've heard of stories where people have, you know, they went with somebody and that person married somebody else, and then they thought that was the end, but that person came back. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, everything isn't really set in stone. I want to also say, as long as you know you have – the purest form of love, care, and compassion for that person. You really, you don't want to be with them because they're this, they're that, they have this or that. You truly see them who God made them as. 
Yeah. Like you see their, their soul, you see their, their, you see that they're a beautiful person. You just want to be with them for them. You know, they're just imagine them nude. I don't care. Like just strip down of what they are. Yeah. Then you know, there's no reason why you can't get them. If you know your love for them is pure. And I've also learned that with guys, they would rather be respected than loved. Cause you know how, um, my SP has been, has, um, his exes tell him that they love him or whatever, but they never respected him. So, you know, just respect the person, <laughs> their space, or if it's you pushed out, if you thinking that they're doing this and that, they're going to act it out. Because, you know, and then, like, just speak stuff into existence. Like I had said um, after my dinner date with him, I said, oh, you know, it'll be great if he comes over and we play, um, what game I had? I had Aggravation yeah gravel so and then i was at work and i saw a text message and he said oh um pick a day this weekend so we could play the games and stuff so now we have an ongoing like because i was cheated out of two words and he won scrabble so now we have this ongoing battle of like you know like games because i was cheated out of scrabble and i have like two new games that we have to play so yeah. whenever we get a chance to play I'm not going to like, you know, oh my God, we haven't played yet. He said, he's, I'm not going to put no pressure yeah. or no anything negative out there so that he can feel that, you know, yeah. when he comes over, he comes over. Like I told him, I said, oh, you know, you, you can make like um, an invitation to the person and say, oh, you know, if you would like to, we can do this and that. Leave it at that. Yeah. Don't keep calling them and saying, oh, Yes. This and this, do you remember? Just leave it at that. I found that when you leave it at that, they they make the suggestion. They say, oh, okay, this and that. But I think what people are scared of is like, is there another person? Is this, that? Like, I don't know what to tell them. Like, you, you can't focus on that. You can't focus on... No. Like, you have to focus on what you want to happen. And of course, if we tell people about, oh, you know we're doing LOA, we're doing spiritual stuff and believing, they're going to be like, oh, well, um, he didn't call you back. You know how if, if you like somebody, my mom was always telling me, oh, if he liked you, he would have did this and this. And, and that really gets to you. Yes. So that's why I want everyone to stay quiet unless you can find somebody that believes like you believe or just shut up about it until you feel like... Yeah. You can share, you know, like talk to you, you can email me or whoever, yeah. you know. I just want people to know that it's not because I attracted my SP back and we have all these years together, but it's because the simple fact that I know I'm loved, I'm convinced that I am, and I got rid of, even though there's still some little beliefs around, like, like say if I walk and I see somebody and they might say something negative, like say, oh, well, you don't know this, and it might bring me back to what I believe. You have to say, that didn't mean anything. Did I project that? Like, I think sometimes people are so much in their mind. Like, I remember um, Shelly told me, oh, you're too much in your mind. I was like, is she saying I'm mental? But, um, like, I do did have a reason of, like, processing things just in my mind, like saying, okay, does it mean this and that? And that's why I was saying, like, with your meditations and, like, the advice you give us and, like, with anything, people shouldn't dissect it and say, oh, you know, like, when they try to ask you what time you do your meditations and whatever, what time should I do it? Do it whenever you feel like you should do it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that, oh, your SP will come back today or tomorrow. Time does not exist. If I was thinking about the time, I would be nuts. Yes. But you know, but I'm just saying, like, it really helps when you see success stories. Hopefully mine's was, you know, I said everything, but I just, you know, it's, it's like, it's, you just have to love yourself. I can't stress that enough. I know it, people might think it's cliche, but it's not, yeah. you know, and don't do it so that you can get something that won't yeah. work. Do it because you're sick of yourself like I was. Yeah. And you know that you are a greater person than what you might think. Who cares what somebody else might think about you? 
because I've had people approach me and say negative things about me. And then I remember I used to be, when I was younger, I used to care about what people thought of me, but now I don't. So you try not to have that, you know, because I always used to think, oh, well, did I do something for them that make me feel that way? Yeah. And I had to come to a point and say, no, they either a-holes or I projected that. But yeah. I've been careful with my projections. Also, if I'm feeling kind of off, um, I don't, you know, try to say that, oh, somebody's being this way with me because I'm projecting that out and it happens. Yeah. But so I'm very careful about my energy. I, I'm not, I don't control anyone. And I understand like some people will be like, oh, they want to control that person. Oh, they got to keep constantly and constantly thinking about that person. So that person could come around. No, mm -hmm. I wasn't constantly thinking about my SP. Like, I know it's like an argument. I know you mentioned this before where somebody was trying to debate you and say, oh, in order for you to attract something, you have to keep constantly, constantly thinking about it. And you don't because that's resistance, you know, resistance to the yeah. thing. No, they were saying, I think about my SP 24 seven. And I said, that's not healthy. I said, that's an addiction. And they okay. said, you're just being negative. It's not an addiction. I'm happy to think about it. It's my desire, something like that. And I thought, no, you have to have a balanced life where you think about other things. Yeah. I like mean, I was thinking about it. Love, if you're thinking about yourself, your person, how can you be attending to your own self-love? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's okay. People are allowed to think what they want and... Yeah, and it's like, I'm sure somebody's going to probably debate me. Bring it on. I don't care. We can debate. We can do whatever. Oh, but funny. I'm not going to argue with you. Everybody, you know, <laughs> they can um, have their own beliefs, but just know that everything's possible. If you don't think it's possible, then it's not. You know, as simple as that. Like, if you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. Yeah. So you have to just get, just get rid of to shut up first yeah. to yourself and make the choice. You, I chose, I chose to contact you. I chose to, to get help because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I didn't know how I was acting until you pointed it out. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. And I was saying, oh, you know, he should have been by himself before. Because I was blaming him for, you know, being in a, a year relationship with that girl it was in another issue. With the, I was like, oh, he needed time to himself. And then when he gets to me, he needs a break. And yeah. I was saying all that stuff. So, and I didn't know. Because in a way, I was thinking, am I saying this? I thought it was a correlation. But then I didn't know. Because I thought, am I thinking too much? But then I saw you. And then I was like, I need help. So, like, thank you for guiding me. And Ooh. I'm sure we're going to have other meetings. And, you know. We will. I think uh, definitely part two because this has already been an hour but oh wow <laughs> I think, um what we'll do martinez we'll do a part two because there's so much good stuff in there and i know there's still so much to say so we'll, yeah we'll um we'll stop there but we'll definitely do a part two and you mentioning jacqueline mm -hmm. i've got a part two with jacqueline tomorrow Oh, you do? Oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah. I've got you today and her tomorrow, so it'll be a weekend of good interviews. So Cool. Yeah, looking forward to hearing your the second part of your story and the second part of hers. Because I wanted to um, show my self-love shirt. So that yes, shows. I was gonna just about to say it. Show it, please. It's lovely. Okay. Can you see it? Is it out? Self-love. Yes. Lovely. And can you... Tell me what's written behind your head because it's blocking two of the words. Oh. Um, uh, in yourself. Okay. Anything is possible if you believe in yourself. Okay. Yep. And I have another thing in the bathroom that says, oh, um, if you believe it is possible, then it is. And believe in yourself and all that. You have, to, you have to make the choice. I was making a passive choice. I was like, oh, but when you're faced with it and it's right here yeah. in your face, yeah. you got to make that choice. So that's... Mm -hmm. Hopefully I helped everyone today. My cat, Charlie, played a, a, played a, he wants me to give him his lunch. Yeah, I'm sure he's been waiting for an hour. He's probably starving. He just ate at seven o'clock. I'm only supposed to feed him twice a day. Uh, so on the weekends, I feed him three times since I'm home. He didn't want to miss out on the action. He wanted to be part of it. He hates it when my SP comes. 
Because when we're sitting on the couch, he sits, he tries to like sit in between us. He sometimes hisses at him. He doesn't like it. Oh, jealous. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, you're not a kitten anymore. No, yeah. he's 10. So. Luckily, luckily um, animals don't understand the rubbing out technique or you'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, he just wants my attention so much. If I'm not paying attention to him, he's like, yeah, yeah. So, and my SP knows, I was like, he does not <laughs> like you. And he's like laughing. So yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Well, he's used to having you all to himself. So yeah yeah so one one more thing before we go when you do your five meditations how long do you spend oh it could be uh this morning was like an hour um because the long ones i do on the weekends yes so it could be from like an hour to like an hour and a half if i fall asleep then i fall asleep yeah and you just do them all in a row um, I pick which ones, like whatever inspired. I, I definitely do the um, self love. Yeah. And then, like, if I feel as though, like, the first one is self love, the last one is radiating out love to my SP. So, yeah. um, I meant to say last week I had to do a meditation on surrendering and letting go. Yeah. I was feeling like that. So, yes. if it's something that I'm feeling, then I do that. Yes. And I did the assumption one and. During the week of work, since I don't have that much time, um, I do like 20, probably half an hour because I do the one with the first best. Yeah. Like when you have combined both of like one of those and then I send out, you know, unconditional love. Every day is unconditional love and, and um, self-love. Yeah. But in the middle, it's like whatever I'm inspired to do, like how I'm feeling. But I think in the beginning, like you start out with self-love, the whole Pono Pono. Yep. Um, dissolving things with people i also had to do that because i had oh and i meant to tell you the guy that i liked before him he contacted me two weeks ago not surprised if you're feeling good because he contacted me in september i think it was before i probably mentioned it to you when i first started talking to you and then i didn't hear nothing from him so i contacted his sister because her sister was his sister's birthday was the 22nd of february yeah and then the 23rd he contacts me and I was like, watch his, for some reason, something was like, you're going to see his number. And I saw his number. So I was like, do I want to text him back? And I was like, oh, um, did you call me? What do you want? So he was like, hi, I just wanted to see how you were doing and stuff. And mind you, our last conversation we had three years ago, he wasn't too nice to me. I don't know if he was drunk or what. Yeah. So wow. I'm like, why are you? I was like, I'm having, I said, I'm doing great. I'm planning my life with my boyfriend. Yeah, good. Love you live that far away from each other i was like to myself even though he'll always be, be my sweetie pie but we didn't have that type of bond he chose his he made his choice three years ago yeah what can i say so i still yep. love him and care for him not romantically i almost yep. got to that point but i'm in love with my best friend who's also my sp yeah and he knows it like i always like i sent him a, a nice text um the other day like he beat me like i was going to text him like, I don't text him unless I feel inspired to. Yeah. So um, someone was like, oh, just text him something if you didn't hear from him. So then that's when I found out that, oh, he texted me the 13th. So I was like, oh, I was going to send you this text saying, um, you know, no matter how you feel about yourself today, know that there's someone, at least one person in this world that thinks you're amazing, you're competent, and you're an awesome person. Mm. And you liked it. I only text and do things if I feel inspired to do it. So maybe, yeah. you know, he needed that for that day. You know, yeah. I don't over, I mean, like, <clears throat> say if he's coming over here and I want to know the time, that's when I'll say, oh, are you still coming? That's it. I don't say, okay, do you want to come over? Like, I don't make that. I just make a suggestion. Yeah. He don't say nothing. He don't say nothing. So it's not that serious with me yeah. you know, I might I used to feel a different certain way but I'm just like you know it's not mm. bigger things in life so yeah. yeah I was like the other guy that texted me I'm like why the hell I want to say why <laughs> the hell are you texting me but yeah I didn't want to send out that negative energy and then say that oh you know blah blah, blah. I was like I don't have time for that so no. I don't know if he'll text me back now but I don't care it's like when you don't care yeah. not because I don't like him no more it's because I'm at a place where who the hell are you to tell me how I feel about myself? 
Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I want people to just get out of there. Just get, love yourself first. Don't give a damn. I'm sorry if I'm swearing. Yes. <laughs> No, it's true. It's I agree with you. I agree. You gotta, you gotta make that choice. This is serious. This is life or death. People kill themselves. Yes. So if yeah. you don't want to transition on the other side and you yeah. want to live the life that you want, please, please, please yeah. love yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. love yourself first, and then you go with hell with any. If y'all need me to talk to you or anything, I don't care how old you are. <laughs> You know, I can learn from younger people, old whoever. I don't care. I can learn from my cat. I don't care who I can learn from. Yeah. But we all can talk, email me, you know, ask yeah. me any questions. I know I'm on a tangent. I yeah. go off on a tangent like Dan goes off on tangents. But, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to help everyone just know that you're loved, you're precious. Even though I don't know you, you know, just self-love first and that's it. That's it. Everyone second. Yeah, and, and tomorrow it. we have the Q and A, right? I think tomorrow, yes, Q and A tomorrow. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I'll be on. Yay! Oh, yes, good idea. I'll upload this today, Martina. That way they'll know that you'll be on there, and then perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, we will sign off. Thank you for coming, Martina. That was brilliant. So much good stuff in there. No problem. And I will put Martina's details down below so those of you that are interested can contact her. Yes, please do. <laughs> <clears throat>